Hey everyone, it's Lisa Harrison, and I am a mentor over at Clickin' Moms and a workshop instructor over at CMU. And I'm just going to do an edit here for you and just have a little fun with this image of my daughter on the beach. This is in North Carolina a few years ago. I am working inside of ACR because that is where I prefer to work. I use Photoshop. I do very little in my raw processor. And since I'm just taking my images into Photoshop and since ACR is part of Photoshop, it works better for me than to add Lightroom to the mix, which is a standalone. So that's just what works for my workflow. So here I am inside of ACR. You can see that I have my Calvin value set um, at 9900, which I actually had it at 10,000 in camera, which is as high as it goes. And you can see that this image is still too cool. So I'm just going to use my white balance dropper here on my husband's white shirt. And you can see that increased the temp quite a bit and the tint as well. I'm going to go ahead and add some more magenta to this. And I'm going to go ahead and pull down the whites and the highlights a bit. And then I'm going to head to my lens correction panel, which I would normally do first. Um, I'm going to straighten this a little more. And normally I crop inside of Photoshop, but I want to get rid of my husband here. So I'm just going to do a loose crop like this just to crop out this distracting stuff over here. All right. And I'm going to go back to my basics panel. And I'm actually going to, actually this is a little crooked to me still. I'm going to go here and use rotate. That looks better to me. All right, now I'm going to go back to the basics panel. I'm going to actually grab my graduated filter. So I'm going to start up here at the top and click. I'm going to hold down the shift key to keep that straight. And what I want to do here is just add a little more color to the sky. If you're not sure, um, what the graduated filter is doing, you can just click here on the mask and it's going to show you where the effect will be applied. So I'm just going to warm that up a little bit, add a little more yellow and a little more magenta and pull the exposure down a little more. What I'm doing is I'm going to replace the sky. So I'm just trying to add some nice color to the sky in case I want to lower the opacity of my new sky layer so that it blends with the original sky. All right, and then I'm going to make one more graduated filter from the bottom up. So I just clicked on new. This time I'm going to start in the bottom and I'm going to pull up. And again, you can use your little mask here if you want to see where this is being applied. I'm going to reset that and I'm going to add some yellow and some magenta. And I actually want to brighten that up just a little bit down here on the bottom. All right, the last thing I want to do here is lighten her up a little bit. So I'm actually going to use the radio filter here and it's set to inside. So anything I do here, the effect is going to be inside of my selection. And I'm going to lighten that up a little. And at this point, this is ready to go into Photoshop. This is the sky that I want to replace um, the original sky with. So what I'm going to do is grab my quick selection tool and I have it fairly small. I'm going to start in the top left corner and I'm just going to make a selection here. And you can see it did a pretty good job until it got over here into this area where the tones and the water are similar to those of the sky. So I am on a Mac. I'm just going to hold down the Opt key to get my minus here, my subtract, and I'm going to just tighten up that selection. And now I'm back to plus mode when I release the Opt key. All right, now I'm going to go to Refine Edge I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to grab Refine Radius and just brush over her hair to see if I can get a better selection there. And here as well, just taking a peek. I could go back and fine tune that. I'm not going to worry about it though because we're going to blend the horizon. I'm going to feather this a little bit. So you can do anywhere between two and five. I'm going to do four. And now what I want to do is 
I am going to fix this right here. All right, I am just going to right click layer via copy or you can control or command J, whatever works for you. And at this point, I have a selection. I have a new layer with that, my sky on it. All right, now I'm going to grab my new sky. So I just pulled this, this was up in a tab. I just pulled it down into my document. I'm gonna get the move tool. And I'm going to click and drag that over. And I'll just size it and hit enter or return to commit that. I have transform controls checked up here. So I have these bounding boxes. So that's how I resized it. All right, at this point, I want to add a layer mask to that. So I'm just going to come down here and click on the layer mask icon. And then I want to clip this new sky to this layer below it. So let's name these layers old sky. And I'm just double clicking so that I can rename these. It's always a good idea to rename your layers so that when you get a lot of them stacked here, you can quickly find the layer that you're looking for. All right, and I'm going to clip this by hovering between the two. I'm gonna hold down Opt, and I'm going to click. And you can see right away that that looks pretty good. All right, so what I wanna do here now is blur this a little bit. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I like to do five. You can find whatever works best for you for your image. And then I wanna get my brush be on my keyboard or you can click here and I want to work at a low opacity and a low flow. I'm going to size this brush kind of big because I want to blend this. Make sure you're on your layer mask. Make sure you have a black mask. I'm just going to paint over that horizon area. All right, and if I were to shift click on my layer mask, you can see this was before my blending and after, so it just helps to blend everything. Um, I could also lower the layer opacity here if I wanted to try and blend that with my original sky. Okay, in this case, I don't think that I'm going to. I am going to adjust the color though. So I'm going to go to Selective Color. If I Alt or Opt click on that adjustment layer, I'm able to rename it. So I, I can just I'll just name this color. I'm going to go to the whites and I want to remove some cyan. So I'm just going to pull this slider to the left and you can see that that took a lot of that blue out of the water in the sky and replaced it with kind of a purpley pink color. I'm going to leave the magenta slider alone. I'm going to add some yellow and I'm going to increase the blacks a little bit. All right, so here's our before and after. All right, and then I'm gonna go to the blacks. And in here, I want to, actually, you know what, I'm gonna go to neutrals. I wanna try and do something with this sand down here. All right, I'm just going to remove a little magenta, maybe try minus five and a little yellow. All right, so here's my selective color adjustment. Now I'm going to do a color balance adjustment. I want to work on the sand a little bit here on warming that up a little bit. I'm going to add some red and I'm going to add some yellow. That might be a little much. So I could either lower these values up here or I can just lower the layer opacity. And at this point, I'm really liking the way that looks. So if I wanted to, I could try and um, add a little bit of contrast to it, but I think that I'm liking the kind of light and airy look here. If I added some contrast to it though, by pulling in the shadow slider, you can see the look you get. Um, or I could also play around with the midtones too. And you know, that can give you a, a whole nother look. So I think that I am going to do something like that. All right, so let's say that I'm done with my edit. 
and I want to just do a little bit of retouching. So I like to use the patch tool, but that would require me to have a new pixel layer, which will increase my file size. So I think I'm just going to work on a new layer here. So I have a new blank transparent layer here, and I'm just going to go ahead and grab the spot healing brush tool. And there's just a couple of things here that I want to get rid of that my eye is drawn to. And this is one of them. This is another. It's just a shell, but it was kind of red. And this was another thing. All right, I'm going to zoom out. I'm quite happy with the way that looks, so that would be my edit. This is my original straight out of camera, and then this is where I wound up with my edit. And I'm going to, um, I'm just going to take a look at my crop here. And maybe I'll just tighten that up a little bit. I want to make sure I'm at a 2 to 3 ratio. And that's my edit. So at this point I would save a PSD file of this in case I needed to access the layers at any point. And then I would get it ready for my final destination. So I have already saved this as a PSD file. So now I'm just going to flatten it. And now I can get it ready for its final destination, whether that's the my blog or the Clickin' Moms forum or for print. All right, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.